And I'm gonna Hi, William and all. Hi, how are you? I, it's I'm, good. <laughs> I'm Greg Greminger. I'm the uh, Magni Gyro <coughs> rep, or one of them in the uh, United States. Magni Gyro is uh, produced over in Italy, and Magni Gyro is a big user of all the Rotex uh, four cycle engines. Uh, so he asked me to uh, tell you about the uh, the aircraft, the gyroplane, and what we are doing with the Rotex engines. Um, first of all, I might say that uh, Magni Gyro started uh, 30 years ago and had somebody in Italy design their own two-cycle four-cylinder engine. It didn't work out so good, very unreliable, and they sold a lot of them in Britain, and uh, there was the problem. Then, then they discovered Rotex, uh, thought they wanted to, they were their priority was uh, reliability and Rotex had enough the 912 at least had enough hours on it that they trusted it they switched to the Rotex 912 and as soon as the 914 came along that was the real engine that made these gyros uh, fly well they fly like an airplane they're uh, easier in the wind than an airplane they're easier to fly than an airplane uh, a little bit about uh, gyros and especially these gyros I'm, I'm not pushing Magni gyros but they are the best in the world so <laughs> Perfect. Uh, That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> they're uh, uh, they're very stable in the wind. They're very stable. They don't have any of the old gyrocopter issues where they were the instability would get uh, pilots into trouble. Um, the the main reason for that is the big tail way back. So once they put that big way, or once everybody else discovered Magni putting the big tail in the in the back, then everybody else started doing it because it makes it fly like an airplane. An airplane pilot doesn't need to learn any more skills and any new skills any different skills to fly it in fact probably can forget a few of the skills first of all has no aileron so there's no, no adverse yaw and you don't need to use the rudder pedals in the air you need the rudder pedals for driving on the ground and also for crosswind landings but in the air you can put your feet on the floor don't worry about it or you can press that rudder pedal all you want and fly sideways as much as you want Perfect. so it uh, um, it's very easy to operate so airplane pilots Generally, I have to remind them, keep your feet off the rudders. You're, you're just making that an uncoordinated turn if you try to do an airplane turn with it. Uh, they will fly through turbulence, and the main reason for that, they'll they fly probably three to four times less sensitive to turbulence than an airplane of the same size. And the main reason for that is the most of the, the lift, or most of the wing, is uh, out on the last three or four foot of the rotor, and that all is going about 300 miles an hour. So a 300 mile an hour wing doesn't get much effect from a 30 mile an hour gust where a 100 mile an hour wing would be bumped around quite a bit so one of the advantages that we like is we can go to the airport on a windy day and nobody else is out there the airport's all ours and we can have fun in the wind of course the wind does things like make the takeoff really sharp takeoff is normally with no wind and a full load around 300 feet that's maybe a little uh, more than an ultralight sometimes but uh, uh, the landings can be very sharp with no wind probably can land and stop rolling in 25 feet. Wow. Uh, takes a little practice or a little skill to build up to do that, but they will land a little bit like a bird. The auto-rotating rotor is uh, uh, a, a, a great invention of uh, Mother Nature. Uh, maple tree seeds that spin to the ground, that's exactly what that rotor's doing. It's spinning through what's called auto-rotation. Mother Nature created it, and Mother Nature gave it some special attributes that really work out for gyroplanes. First of all, the rotors can cone, they can spin up faster like a um, uh, ice skater that's spinning and draw their uh, arms in. It'll spin up faster and it does all that automatically. So for years and years, airplane pilots have been trying to make wings that conform to the need like a bird's does. You know, they can make them thicker, longer, whatever. They've been trying to do that. And of course they have flaps and slats and all this mechanical stuff on them. That rotor does it automatically. If it gets an extra load from a wind gust, it cones up, speeds up, and absorbs that wind, gu wind gust. And when you put a big tail in the back, like all airplanes have, uh, that, that uh, pitches the aircraft to handle that gust of wind, okay. uh, updraft or downdraft. And of course it has vertical and horizontal stabilizers like an airplane, so it flies like an airplane, but it mostly flies hands off. Uh, these, you can set a trim. You can trim it for any speed between about 40 miles an hour and uh, probably 110 miles an hour. Um, it, it will automatically hold that speed. Uh, it will adjust its angle of attack to hold that speed. Uh, wind gusts come in, it will compensate for that. For instance, a, a strong wind gust come in, a, a head-on wind gust, it's going to sense that and lower the nose and keep from climbing. So it will maintain that altitude better than you can do in an airplane. 
actually they don't even roll in a wind gust, which I've never figured out why that is, but they won't roll. You know, an airplane, you go to land and wind gust hits you from the side and you're worried, am I going to be able to straighten it out? It doesn't do that for some reason. Uh, we'll lower the nose and raise the nose, but it's a slow, uh, slow speed and you feel it, it feels like you're on a long bungee cord, okay. like the kind you jump off a bridge with. It feels like a real slow bungee cord. Um, so it, it makes it fun to fly in turbulence, makes it easy to fly in turbulence, handles crosswinds, at least as good as an airplane. Uh, these are, I think they say, up to 15, 20 miles an hour direct crosswind. But if That's you've impressive. got that much wind that you're kind of worried about the crosswind, it can land so sharp, just turn land across the runway, which okay. we can do any time or pick you out a taxiway that's into the wind better or something. But that's hardly ever necessary. Um, they, they have great crosswind capability, and you land it just like an airplane in a crosswind, uh, rudder to keep the nose straight, stick to stop the slip, uh, and it's the same skills to fly it as you've got in an airplane. Um, airplane pilots can transition into these in a very short order. At least they can fly it easily within 10 minutes. Not a, well, not a big think, deal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, landing it is different for them only because it, land, it has the same things you have to do on a landing. You hold, a, uh, hold an airspeed on final approach and at a flare altitude you raise the nose and you float along the ground, bleed off some energy and touch the wheels. Uh, the gyro does exactly the same thing, but it does it steeper. It when you it, you flare closer to the ground, and it slows down faster, and and uh, uh, the rotor uh, causes more drag at that time, so you land in a shorter distance. So basically, you do the same thing as you land an airplane, but you got to do it steeper, lower, and quicker. So uh, you it takes a maybe a couple three hours to really master that because you've got your airplane Just they're not uh, used habits. To it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not used to it. Um, these these gyroplanes, boy, these these are a lot of fun to fly. They're open cockpit tandem. This is a trainer. This is a trainer. They have uh, uh, the trainers have controls in the back, so the students in the front and the instructors in the back uh, makes it uh, very good for uh, uh, flight training. The student in front, when you're sitting in the front of this thing, you feel like you really feel like you're in a fighter airplane. Um, you, you've got the full view. It's all centered right in front of you. And, well, these things that do 100, 110, 115 miles an hour, and if you fly these on the deck, five or 10 mile, mile an hour on the deck, where's open legal land to do that? We do this out west over the deserts and stuff. Um, you really feel like you're maverick in an F-18. <laughs> in, in the top gun. It's <laughs> really moving. I've actually had uh, Navy um, jet instructors, retired, come to me, take, a, take some lessons, and come back every year or so just because it gives them the feeling like they're in that airplane again. In fact, we set up a, a games for them. We say, okay, see that thousand foot marker on the runway, which is what, about 30 foot long? Yeah. That's your deck. Let's see you land on it and stop before you go over the end of it. So it's, it's kind of fun to do that too. And you can build your skills where you can actually do that. Um, what else about uh, gyro planes? Mechanically, they're very simple. Uh, they have fewer moving parts than a fixed wing does, even a small fixed wing like some of the light sports. They have fewer moving parts because all they have is a spindle at the top that your stick controls where that spindle moves. Okay. The rotor then, the rotor spinning disc automatically follows that. So the rotor, if it, if you if you give it some uh, left stick, the rotor goes like that, well what's the aircraft do? Flies off into the turn. And rather than turning with ailerons where you have to turn the whole aircraft, you turn the wing and the aircraft follows it like an arrow because it's got those big tails back there. Um, the, um, so the, the uh, pitch and roll control is very simple. It's all in one stick. And on these open models, I can see every joint, every thing all the way back. So like some of my experienced uh, pilots have said when I show them how to do a pre-flight, they said, well, that's doing an annual. <laughs> so, well, you can see it. Perfect. So make sure it's there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so they're very simple mechanically. A story I've got is back in the 2000 or so when uh, FAA was considering light sport and sport pilot stuff. It was an NPRM that they put out and they said gyroplanes and helicopters are not allowed because they're too complex. So we invited the project manager to uh, uh, one of our safety meetings, had some gyros there and had her 
inspect them, sit in them and stuff, and she flew there in her own Cherokee. And uh, she got finished with that and said, these are simpler than my airplane. Says, we're gonna allow these into sport pilot. Oh, awesome. So th they're not complex. Now, a helicopter's complex. It's got 10 times as many moving parts, or what they say, it's got 10 times as many Jesus bolts. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there's a little bit more to worry about and a little bit more that you have to maintain. But these are very simple uh, mechanically. Uh, everything is at least a factor of 10 over design. The airframes on these are all aircraft welded steel, 4130 aircraft steel, all completely welded uh, frames. And the airframe is stressed, uh, uh, spec for three and a half G's load. So one of the aspects out of a spinning rotor is it cannot pull more than two and a half or one and a half or two G's. It will spin up, spill the load, whatever, but you go into a tight turn, you won't see three G's. You won't see two G's. You might see one and a half. You can feel them, but it's spilling the rest. So it's if very you can, comfortable. Yes, yeah. it's very comfortable. And if you are pulling the max G's you can pull, I mean a hard, tight turn, it uh, still won't overstress anything. It's two, one and a half, two G's on a three and a half G uh, airframe. So okay. the battery's not going to fall off. Your seat's not going to break or anything because the, the uh, rotor automatically compensates for that. For that reason, there is no such thing as a maneuvering speed. A maneuvering speed in as an airplane is one where the, if the gusts are strong enough or you make a hard enough turn, you can break the wings off with too much load on them. They're not designed. They're designed for three and a half G's and you put four G's on them and you're going to crinkle a, a wing or something. So uh, on a gyro plane, because there's no limit on the G's you can pull, uh, the, there is no maneuvering speed. Now if you're flying in really gusty wind, it might be a little less comfortable and you want to slow down a little bit, but it's not necessary for a structural reason like you would do in an airplane. In an airplane, if you're flying in um, gusty winds, there's a specific speed that they want you to fly. It's called maneuvering speed, and that is so that if the wind gust hits it hard enough, the wing will stall before it breaks. So uh, don't have to worry about that in gyro planes either. So because, first of all, they won't stall, I can fly at uh, zero miles an hour. I am coming down, down, vertically down like a parachute, but it's zero miles an hour. It's perfectly controllable. Even while I'm coming down at zero miles an hour, I can kick a rudder and stick to the side and spin around, have do whatever I want, and easily fly out of it. You have to be going, uh, uh, your landing approach, you need to have some speed. Usually it's about 50, 60 miles an hour to make a flared landing. You cannot go all the way to the ground straight down. It will not hover like a helicopter. It's one of the, one of the issues. Misconceptions? With, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, there's a misconception, but uh, because it doesn't have, you're, you're gaining so, so many fewer parts and safety and reliability, but it will not hover. Okay. It will hover in a 30 mile an hour wind because there's enough engine on these to be able to fly at 30 miles an hour and hold altitude. And so basically the speed range is uh, from zero to 115 or so, 115 miles an hour. So it has a big speed range. These have a trim on it. You can trim it for whatever speed you want between 40 and about 105. And it will, hands off, maintain that airspeed for you. Oh, that's amazing. So, Wow, uh, you've given me a huge lesson on this and I appreciate it. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about what the engine does. Okay. The Rotax engine is it runs a pusher prop and of course that gives you your forward movement. The rotor disc is tilted back to your movement so that's the air going through it. The air goes through the rotor and out the top which is almost the same as a wing. The air uh, um, hits the wing at an angle of attack and pr provides lift. Well, that's the same thing a rotor does. The air goes under the rotor and the the rotor slows that air down and you get a downdraft past it, but there's no air blowing down like a helicopter. So this makes a, a lot of people use them for crop spraying, small, oh, okay. po small pop uh, areas, but for crop spraying, it doesn't blow the, the stuff all over the place because it's not blowing it around. It's, uh, there's no airflow underneath of it. Um, but the, propell the engine and propeller provides the forward thrust and because the rotor's in a, a wing all the time, if you want to go up, you just turn up the rotor Rotax engine a little bit more. Okay, okay. If you want to go down, you cut it back a little bit. If you want to stay level, you put it at the right spot and it'll stay level, it'll hold level for you. So your, your engine, your power is your height control and uh, the, uh, um, the stick fore and aft is your speed control. And you, like I said, you can put a trim on it and set it for that speed and it'll just hold it automatically. So you can fly it hands off. Your hands can be used for 
other stuff, cameras, and not sleeping, but <laughs> other stuff. Uh, so, um, but the the one of the reasons that we really love the uh, Rotex is its reliability. Really love the 914 and 912 because that's just a straightforward engine. Almost any body flying it understands that engine. We have good engine monitoring stuff. We've got graphical displays, EGT, C cylinder hit temperatures, uh, uh, battery voltage, fuel pressures, all that stuff so we can monitor those engines real well. Now the 915 is a little bit newer to us. When you go from 115 horsepower up to 141 horsepower, you, you feel it. So uh, the 915 has that extra boost and this is the one that really feels like Maverick. Okay. <laughs> so as, uh, you can jam that throttle forward and you see it in the movie and you're moving and it starts moving it'll catch up when you fly formation it's really fun because you want to catch up with somebody just boost it and just catch there and cut her back yeah, yeah. Cut it back oh you can just give it all of it <laughs> and okay, don't hold back you don't back. have to yeah don't hold back um the 915 uh feel like you got to learn a little bit more about it because it's all computer controlled uh and i wish it had more than idiot lights because uh, if an idiot light comes on i don't know really what's going on but uh, it's been very reliable for me, and uh, I understand it's been very reliable for everybody. Um, but uh, it takes a little bit more uh, education to know what's really going on in there and, and uh, how it's controlled and, and all. Uh, right now, I just know I got a power lever, and it makes it go. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> go or go more. <laughs> so. Oh, that's, you know what? Oh, I appreciate your time with us. That's amazing. Um, so, where can people find you? Okay, uh, I'm in Missouri, uh, just south of St. Louis on the, along the Mississippi River. It's called St. Genevieve, Missouri, but uh, the airport I operate out of is Perryville, Missouri, uh, KPCD. Um, they can just Google Magni Gyro or okay. Magni, and one of them will be me. We have several dealers around the country, and I would um, probably, if you're closer to some of them or uh, need something special, I might refer you to another a dealer and they're all instructors too and can can get you your ratings and license and sport pilot oh, that's what and I mean to us. you can handle all of that that's perfect yeah between all of us I mean right here in this area we've got five gyroplane flight instructors oh. I'm one of them and I'm trying to phase down a little bit but uh, that's all you need is a couple of flight instructors to get your uh, sport pilot uh, uh, add-on endorsement okay. oh, thank you so much for your time I truly appreciate that you're welcome thank you William. thank you